Hi, in this video, I'm going to do summary for chapter 6, then we're going to attempt few past year question. Okay, let's start with uniform circular motion. So, uniform circular motion is a motion of a body in a circle at constant speed. The magnitude of the velocity will remain constant or remain unchanged, but the direction of the velocity will keep changing. Okay, so as shown in the sketching, where our V, the value will remain the same, but the direction will keep changing as it moves in the circular path. Okay, this mean velocity is not constant since the direction keep changing. So when velocity is not constant, okay, this mean the object will continually accelerating. Okay, now let me introduce few terminology in circular motion or few keywords that all of you need to remember. The first one is angular displacement, theta, okay, where s equal to r theta and s is our linear displacement. So this is how we re relate linear and also rotational, okay. And second is angular velocity omega, omega equal d theta over dt, derivation of theta in terms of t, so we get omega equal to v over r. And the third one is period, that is t, t have two equations, that is t equal to 1 over frequency, or t equal to 2 pi over omega. And the fourth one is frequency, so f equal to 1 over t, and f equal to omega over 2 pi okay so these are the few equation that you need to remember so s equal to r theta omega equal to v over r t equal to 2 pi divided by omega and f equal to omega divided by 2 pi let's check on the unit that is theta in radians s in meter omega in radian per second period in second and f in hertz Okay, let's move to centripetal acceleration. So what is centripetal acceleration? It is an acceleration of an object moving in circular path whose direction okay, is towards the center of the circular path. And the magnitude of the acceleration is equal to the square of the speed divided by the radius of the circular path. Okay, so I underline the keywords for your definition. Okay, you need to remember this definition. Okay, so from the definition, we get AC equal to V square divided by R. Or we can express it as a SAC equal to R omega square. Or AC equal to V times with omega. Okay, this means our V based on the sketching. So V and AC always perpendicular to each other. And AC is always directed towards the center. Okay, so next is centripetal force. Okay, we know that any object that experience acceleration will have a net force acting on it. So since we have centripetal acceleration, so we have centripetal force. So based on Newton's second law, we know that F net equal to MA. So in circular motion, our net force now equal to centripetal force, that is MAC. So we can substitute our equation for AC, so we get the final equation to be fc equal to m v square divided by r okay so how to draw or find the direction of fc so fc always pointing towards the center in the same direction as our centripetal acceleration okay and it is at perpendicular with our tangential velocity okay centripetal force can be supplied by few forces okay we have tension okay tension gravitational force okay normal force and friction okay please remember centripetal force is not a new force 
it is a net force that come from the five forces that we learn in chapter 4 okay let's solve the first past equation what is meant by centripetal force so force acting on a body of mass m causing it to move in circular path of radius r with constant speed in which the direction of the centripetal force is towards the center of circular path okay so there are few keywords that you need to remember so it is a force that acting on a body of mass that are moving in circular path with constant speed and the direction towards the center of circular path Question B, it asks to calculate the centripetal acceleration of an object at the equator due to rotation of Earth. So, radius of Earth is given 6.4 exponent 6 meter. So, we want to find our AC. Okay, so we have our R, but we do not have our period. Okay, so we know that the period for one revolution of Earth is 24 hours. So, we need to convert into seconds. So, we get 86. 400 second okay so we use equation for ac that is v squared divided by r okay so we replace or substitute the other equation for velocity that is 2 pi r that is the circumference divided by t period substituting for the value given okay so 4 pi squared times 6.4 exponent 6 divided by the the period okay so we get ac value to be 3.39 exponent negative 2 meter per second square next look at figure 6 okay so we have a object an object being attached to a horizontal rod by two string with each of length 0 0.5 meter okay and the speed is at meter per second around the rod axis okay so we want to find the tension at the lowest point and the highest point okay so given mass length and also speed okay so first thing that we need to draw to do is to draw the free body diagram for each of the positions so we start with the lowest point okay so the free body diagram is drawn as shown in the video okay don't forget to find the angle okay so we want to find angle theta okay we're going to use so that is sine equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse so we get theta to be 36.9 degree second step we need to check what forces acting on the object and contribute to centripetal force so we draw the free body diagram again so we have tension and weight okay so our tension need to be resolved so we have tx and ty for both tension since it's the same tension okay so both are pointing upward that is into the center of the circular path okay we know that centripetal force also acting towards the center so this means the component that contributes to centripetal force is our y component so sum of the forces at y component will equal to centripetal force and we have dy plus dy minus with weight that are the forces acting on the y component equal to mac okay so substitute everything and we get our equation to be t equal to mv squared divided by r plus mg divided by 2 cos theta Okay, so now substitute all the value given into the final equation. Okay, so we have 0 0.31 times with f square divided by 0 0.3, that is the radius of the circular path, plus with the mass of the object 0 0.3 times with 9.81 divided by 2 cos theta, where our theta is 36.9 degree. Okay, so we get the final value for tension on the lowest point to be T equal to 31.9 Newton. Okay, next we proceed to the second part where we want to find our tension at the highest point. Okay, so first draw the free body diagram. So we have 
weight, we have tension. Okay, so tension need to be resolved. Okay, so since it's the same, so angle that we find in the first part will be the same for the second part. Okay, where theta equal to thirty six point nine degree. Okay, so we need to draw our free body diagram and resolve tension. Okay, so we can see that the forces or the white co y component will contribute to the centripetal force. So this means the sum of our y component forces at y component equal to centripetal force. So we have ty plus ty plus with weight because all the forces are acting at the same direction with the centripetal acceleration. So all are positive. So we need to substitute all the value into the final equation and we get tension to be 28.2 newton. This means the tension at the highest point is greater compared to the tension at the lowest point. Proceed with the second pass equation. We have a 0.2 kg bore attached to the end of a string rotated in horizontal circle on a frictionless table surface. So the string will snap when the tension exceeds 50 Newton because we have string so we have tension. Okay, so we draw the free body diagram first. So we have weight pointing downward, tension pointing towards the center of the circular path that is in the same direction with centripetal acceleration. This means the sum of our forces at the x component will equal to our centripetal force. So this means the forces at x component that is tension will equal to our centripetal force. So T max equal to MV max square divided by R. So we rearrange the equation. So we have our V max okay, equal to square root T max times with R divided by M. Okay, substitute all the value given so we get 19.4 meter per second okay question B asked to find or to explain what happened to the maximum speed of the board if there is friction on the table okay so now we need to consider the friction that will oppose the motion okay so we have the free body diagram tension will have the tension will point at the opposite direction with the friction okay so this means our sum of forces at the x component will be t max minus with the friction equal to centripetal force this means the sum of forces at x component is now being reduced therefore the maximum speed v max will also be reduced so it will decrease okay let's check on the final pass equation that we're going to attempt so we have a conical pendulum okay that has a length of 60 cm okay so the pendulum swing max an angle 37 degree with the vertical so first we need to sketch the free body diagram of the pendulum okay so this pendulum will move in a circular path okay so the free body diagram we're going to have weight we're going to have tension since it has a string okay and we need to write at which direction is the centripetal acceleration that is toward the center of the circular path that it makes. Okay, and the angle will be 37 degree. Okay, this means tension need to be resolved. Okay, so next we need to resolve our tension. So before we calculate the speed of the pendulum, so let's sketch again the free body diagram. Okay where we have theta 37 and we resolve our tension to be tx and ty okay so this means our tx is at the same direction with centripetal acceleration okay so the sum of forces at the x component will equal to centripetal force so the only force that at the x component is our tx that is tension at the x component okay so tx is t sine 37 equal to mv squared divided by r so this is the first equation and next since we doesn't know what is the value for tension what is the value for r and what is our mass so we need to check 
other component so we need to look at our y component that is equal to zero so at y component we have dy minus with weight equal to zero so this will give you the second equation so we need to compare one and two so we can just cancel our tension okay cancel our mass so we left with v equal to square root rg tan 37 degree okay so what is the value of our r so we need to we need to calculate the value of r first so we can use sine theta equal to r divided by 0 0.6 so r equal to 0 0.6 sine 37 that is our fourth equation okay so substitute the fourth equation into the third equation so we get the value of the speed to be 1.63 meter per second and if you want to find the angular velocity omega equal to v divided by r so 1.63 divided by 0 0.6 sine 37 degrees so we get 4.52 radian per second so don't forget to subscribe and like my youtube channel thank you